Since this one doesn't have square roots, hopefully it's a little bit easier. But we are still solving for x. Um, so, let's look at our substitution. And this one already has all the terms on one side, and it's equal to 0, this quadratic kind of thing. So, uh, again, I, I really just want to look at this middle unknown. See that it's x squared, right? And then this, this other term right here is x squared squared. So I'm going to rewrite this that way just maybe to see if it helps you guys out, okay? So hopefully the colors help. It's x squared being squared there, that leading term. And, of course, if we were to simplify that using the exponent rules would multiply the two twos. That would give us x to the fourth. But now it gives us an x squared to compare for both the leading term and the second term there. Now that we've seen that, we've got the leading term, which has the unknown squared, and then the middle term just has that unknown. I'm going to replace u. I'm going to say that u is the x squared. All right? So if we were to look at this, so u is x squared. That, that doesn't really, I guess, it for some of us it does, but for some of us it doesn't also help us with this stuff right here. So all I'm going to do to make that x squared, which would have been squared, right? That's what we had up there in the equation. But if I do it to one, I've got to do it to the other, which means that u squared is really x squared squared, which is x to the fourth. All right. So that leading term, that x to the fourth, we're going to replace with what we found was u squared, because u squared is x to the fourth. We're going to add this to 2, but now x squared is just a u, and then I got minus 3 equals 0. So we could use the quadratic formula to solve this thing, right? But the nice thing about this one is the c value, if we were looking at a quadratic, is this negative 3. If I can find two factors of negative 3 that add up to this 2, I don't really need the quadratic formula, and it may be a little bit shorter. So I'm really looking at uh, two values. I'm going to try 3 and negative 1. Bam! If I add those two together, I get this positive 2, which means I can split this up right now to be u plus 3, and u minus 1 is equal to 0. Well, at this point, now that we have these two binomials, and we got minus 1 and plus 3, I'm just going to replace u with what, what it was. And that was uh, x squared, right? So I got x squared plus 3 and x squared minus 1. If I can make those equal to 0, I'm in really good shape. So what I need now is to look at the sum of two squares and the difference of two squares because that's what I'm looking at. And these two are not conjugates, so that doesn't really help us either. So I'm going to change these a little bit, just so we can see what A and B are, right? <clears throat> uh, I'm going to make this, and uh, we'll make that uh, x squared. And then I'm going to make this a plus the square root of 3 squared. So, um, <laughs> Just, just keeping with this x squared plus the square root of 3 squared stuff, um, I, I'm going to make that uh, minus the negative of that garbage. I'm going to continue this thing and just hope that not everyone <laughs> really needs all these steps, but uh, maybe some people do, and that's okay. So I'm going to change that. See how we got that minus and negative stuff? So I've got x squared minus, that's a negative. I'm going to make that negative, because that's, that's really a negative 1. I'm going to change it to i squared. Whatever, so <laughs> this is the sum of two squares stuff. This is the square root of 3 squared. Well, so I've got those two things that are squared right there, so I can really change this to x squared, I'm sorry, that was in parentheses, minus 
with the square root of 3, i, and we're going to square that, and it's this whole thing squared, okay? Now that I've got the minus, or the difference, of two squares, and again, a lot of people skip all three of those steps, and they move right into this stuff. I said three, yeah, three steps. Now what I have is x minus the square root of 3i times x plus. Well, that right there is pretty nifty because it gave us two answers. If I said that x was the square root of 3i, I'd be right. I'm sorry, I put the square root of the i I should not have. That's just the square root of 3. And this other one, if that was a negative square root of 3 times i, I would still be good on that one. How did you get the square root? So we also had that x squared minus 1. Well, we can change that to x minus 1 and x plus 1. And that gives us these two answers where x is 1 and also that x is negative 1. So that gave us these four answers, 1, 2, 3, 4, which we should go back and just check them in the equation. But for the sake of time, I want to get to that other method first. So let's get started on that. Uh, looking back to this part right here, let's say that uh, I don't really care if they factor out or care if I notice that they factor out or maybe just don't care at all and take a nap, whatever. Um, well, that's a, that's a 1u squared plus 2u minus 3. So we know our a, b, and c values. So in the quadratic equation, all right, and this is what it looks like. Again, I've replaced the b's, the a's, and the c. So just simplifying this thing, I'd get a negative 2 plus or minus the square root 4 minus... 4 times negative 3, so that's 4 plus 12, and that's all over 2. So simplifying this further, i get rid of this. It's really, I'm sorry, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 16 over 2. So that's a negative 2 plus or minus 4. Is this where you would break it out? All over 2. Plus 4 and minus 4? That's correct, okay. yep. So if we did that... I'd have negative 2 plus 4 is 2 over 2, so u is 1. And then negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6 over 2 is negative 3, right? Mm -hmm. I know you guys are licking your chops at this thing, especially once I replace u. Uh, because u, what was u? Well, u is x squared. And yes, this looks easier to solve now, but again, once you get used to it, you may change your mind. So, you get to choose whichever way you like right now. And how would we solve for these? Well, I would square root both. Okay. So, that's really x squared. The square root of that is really the absolute value of x. The square root of 1 is 1. So, that's where we get x equals 1 and negative 1. And let's do it to the other one. So we got the square root of x squared equals square root of negative 3. So I got the absolute value of x equals i times the square root of 3. That i came from this negative being inside the radical. Okay. So if I were to split that up, then I would have x equals the positive i square root of 3. And I also get x is the negative i square root of 3. And that right there shows all four of our answers. There's two of them, 3 and 4. And they are the same. So <laughs> after doing that, I could see why you guys hate this stuff. <laughs> but I did a lot of steps in there, which, again, most people don't use. So you kind of have to choose which one you like the best.